Well, good morning, Faith Wesleyan Church. I wanted to take a little bit of time today and talk to you about one of the most significant events in Christian theology. As you all know, Easter is quickly approaching, and with it comes a tremendous amount of significance in the Christian faith. In fact, it holds for us some of the defining factors of our belief system altogether. What is it that we really celebrate during Easter? Well, we know that the week preceding Jesus' triumphal entry and a bunch of people praising him as the coming king. But just a few days after that, we find Jesus on trial for his life. Now, the prosecutors find no fault in him, yet at the end of the day, they end up sentencing him to death. And that Friday, he's nailed to a cross, stabbed with a spear, and then laid to rest in a tomb. Then Sunday rolls around and it changes everything, doesn't it? And then uh, you, you guys know the story, but, but we find out from God's word that Jesus, after being dead for three days, comes back to life. And this fact becomes the basis and a defining moment in Christianity. Let me show you what I mean. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to go ahead and get them out. Um, you can turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, and I want you to read verse 17. Uh, it says this, I'm reading from the NIV today, but it says this, And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. The point that Paul is trying to make here is that if Christ wasn't raised from the dead, then Christianity itself is really pointless. Christianity is based upon serving the living Savior, one who lived a sinless life here on earth, who shed his blood on the cross to save a world from their sins, one who has the power to overcome death and hell, and now has the ability to, to give us the keys to eternal life. If those things are untrue, then what purpose really is there in following the Christian faith? Well, the truth is there really isn't any. So my plan for today and over the next few days is to give you some reasons to trust and to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Each day leading up to Easter Sunday, uh, I'm going to give you another point. So let, let's just dive in today. The very first reason that I want to give you today is because the scripture foretells Jesus' birth. His life, his death, and his resurrection. So scripture backs it up completely. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. Now if you read that whole chapter, you're going to find some really interesting stuff there. He, he talks about Jesus and what he's going to encounter uh, during his life and all the way through his death and resurrection. But Isaiah chapter 53, and if you'll look at verse uh, number 8 with me, I think that you're going to find uh, this pretty interesting. Here, here's what it says. It says, By oppression and by judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in him. After he suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. Pay attention to that. After he suffers, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many and will bear their iniquities. But what I want you to see is that even Old Testament scripture tells us that Jesus Christ not only was going to be born, uh, but we see that they prophesied that he's going to come to earth, that he's going to, to live this sinless life, that he's going to be put to death for it. And as a result, he's going to justify, he's going to bear the sins of those that are, are, are living in that. The, the next place is we take a shift into the New Testament and you go to Matthew chapter 16, Verse 21, and I just want to give you another point there. It says this, From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, 
that he must be killed and then on the third day be raised to life. That's Matthew 16, 21. I want you to understand this, that even when Jesus came uh, to this world, he started to prophesy about what was going to happen to him. And in doing so, what we find is that Jesus gives us this glimpse of a supernatural power. It tells us that he not only understands what is coming and what is going to happen, but he understands that he's going to give up his life. And then in three days, he's going to raise again. I, I just want you to know this, that from the very beginning, the onset, Jesus knew what was expected of him and he knew what was going on. And I think that one of those places that we can rest today or, or be assured is in the fact that Jesus Christ loved us enough that he would write down even before these things went on so that we could be confident, so that we knew that when the Messiah came, that he was going to have to go through those things. And when we start to see the prophecy fulfilled and given to us through that, I think it's a great reason for us to believe. Now, I already told you my plan is to, to give you uh, several more leading up to Easter and maybe even past Easter. Uh, but I want to just give you some reasons to believe today. One of those places in your life that you can continue to to find just some reassurance as to why you believe what you believe. Today, um, you should be excited about what Jesus Christ has done for you. And there should be a place in your heart today that says, you know what, I believe because God's word told me that this was gonna happen and it was fulfilled as a result of it. I love you guys and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Have a great day.